Hello kindergarten friends, this is called A Chair for My Mother by Vera B. Williams. My mother works as a waitress in the Blue Tile Diner. You guys know what a waitress is, right? Yes, somebody who helps you when you go to a restaurant, helps you order, you know, helps you get your food order in and make sure that you have everything you need, yes. After school, sometimes I would go to meet her there. Then her boss, Josephine, gives me jobs. I wash the salts and peppers and fill the ketchup. One time I peel all the onions for onion soup. And when I finish, Josephine says, hey, good work, honey. She pays me. And every time I put half of the money into the jar. the jar it takes a long time to fill this big fill a jar this big every day when my mother comes home from work I take down the jar my mama empties all her change from tips out of her purse for me to count and then we push all the extra coins into the jar sometimes my mama's laughing when she comes home from work sometimes she's so tired she falls asleep while I count the money into piles some days she has lots of tips do you know what tips are Oh yes, uh, right. It's what uh, your mom and dad might leave behind, leave uh, when you when you leave the restaurant uh, to make sure you know to to thank the waiter or waitress for for taking care of you. Yeah, and I can tell you as a person who's done that work before, please please always make sure you take care of your waiter and waitress. They work very hard. Some days she has lots of tips. Some days she has only a little. Then she looks worried, but. Each evening, every single shiny coin goes into the jar. We sit in the kitchen to count the tips. Usually, Grandma sits with us, too. While we count, she likes to hum. Often, she has money in her old leather wallet for us. Whenever she gets a good bargain on tomatoes or bananas or something she buys, she puts the savings... Um, uh, she, she puts everything she saves into the jar. I love that picture. Still got a long way to go to fill that jar, right? When we can't get a, a, a single, another single coin into that jar, we are going to get, we're going to take all that money and get by a chair. Yes, a chair, a wonderfully beautiful, soft armchair. We will get one covered in velvet and roses all over it. We're going to get the best chair in the whole world. This is because our old chairs burned up. There was a big fire in our house. All of our chairs burned. So did our sofa. So did everything. That wasn't such a long time ago. Wow. What a terrible thing to have happen. So mother and I were just coming home from buying new shoes. I had sandals, she had new pumps. We were walking to our house from the bus. We were looking at everyone's tulips. She was saying she liked the red ones and I was saying I like the yellow ones. And then we came to our block. Right outside our house stood two big fire engines. I could see lots of smoke. Tall orange flames came out of the roof. All the neighbors stood in a bunch across the street. Oh my God, could you picture that scene in your head? Close your eyes for a second. What do you think that would look like? That'd be, how would you feel? How does that make you feel? Like, kind of scared, right? Yeah, let's see what it shows in the illustration. Oh yes. Is that what you're imagining, something like that? Yeah, me too. Mama grabbed my hand and we ran. My Uncle Sandy saw us and ran to us. Mama, where's mother? Yelled my mom. I yelled, where's my grandma? Aunt Ida waved and shouted, she's here, she's here, she's okay, don't worry. Grandma was all right. Our cat was safe too, though it took a, a while to find her. Everything else in her house was spoiled. 
What was left in the house was turned to charcoal and ashes. We went to stay with my mother's sister, my, my mother's sister, Aunt Ida and Uncle Sandy. Then we were able to move into the apartment downstairs. We painted the walls yellow. The floors were all shiny, but the rooms were very empty. Wow. That just must be so devastating to have that happen. Right? Imagine that. The first day we moved in, first day we moved in though, the neighbors brought pizza and cake and ice cream. They brought lots of other things too. The family across the street brought a table and three kitchen chairs. The very old man next door gave us a bed uh, from when his children were little. And my other grandpa brought us a beautiful rug. My mother's other sister, Sally, made us red and white curtains. Mama's boss, Josephine, bought pots and pans, silverware and dishes. My cousin brought me her own stuffed bear. Everyone clapped when my grandma made a speech. Oh, you are the kindest people. And we thank you very much. It's so lucky we're young and, and we can start all over, she said. Wow, what do you think about everybody going off like that? They've been so helpful, right? Wow, what a community. Ooh, look at that. Well, that was last year. But we still have no sofa and no big chairs. When Mama comes home, her feet hurts. Ah, there's no good place for me to take a load off my feet, she says. When Grandma wants to sit back and hum and cut up potatoes, she has no com she she has to get comfortable as she can in a hard kitchen chair. So that is how come Mama brought home the biggest jar she could find at the diner, and all the coins started to go into that jar. Now the jar is too heavy for me to lift. Uncle Sandy gave me a quarter. He had to boost me up so I could put it in. Are they getting close? Well, after supper, Mama, Grandma, and I stood in front of the jar. Well, I never would have believed it, but I guess it's full, Mama said. My mother brought home little paper wrappers for nickels and dimes and quarters. I counted them all out and wrapped them all up. And my, on my mother's day off, we took all the coins to the bank. The bank exchanged them for $10 bills. And then we took the bus downtown to shop for our chair. We shopped through four furniture stores. We tried out big chairs and smaller ones, high chairs, low chairs, soft chairs, harder ones. Grandma said she felt like Goldilocks and the three bears trying out so many chairs. Gotta get the right one. Finally, we found the chair we'd all been dreaming of. And the money in the job was enough to pay for it. We called Aunt Ida and Uncle Sandy. They came right down in their pickup truck to drive the chair home for us. They knew we couldn't wait for it to be delivered. I tried out our chair in the back of the truck. But Mama wouldn't let me sit there while we drive home. But they let me sit in it while they carried it up to the door. We set the chair right beside the window with the red and white curtains. Grandma and Mom, Mama and I all, all sat in it while Aunt Ida took our picture. Now Grandma sits in it and talks with people going by. And in the daytime, Mama sits down and watches the news when she comes home. After supper, I sit with her, and she can reach right up and turn out the light if I fall asleep in her lap. And that is the end of our story. A Chair for My Mother by Vera B. Williams. I hope you liked it. I always love that story. All right. Thank you for listening, everyone.